Hello everyone, welcome back to Restart with me, Jason Tarnick, where we are taking the craziness of today and breaking it down so it's relatable to you. Today we are talking about where I can invest my money. It's a golden question that many people are asking now more than ever. So we're going to address that, but we're also going to address why you invest your money, when it makes sense to invest your money, how to invest your money, and then we're going to talk about where you invest your money. But one thing with investing that's important is that we don't want to panic, we don't want to make emotional decisions, we want to be very well thought out, have a strategy, an approach that makes a lot of sense. So when our investment goes good or bad or consistent, we can always go back to what the plan of attack was and adjust accordingly. Now I'm going to give you a pretty good example of what we don't do. I refer to this as the bone and ham play. Okay, this is a different circumstance than investing, but this is what happens when someone, maybe it's me, panics, is a, has an emotional eruptive decision, and really just feels like he's backed in your corner and doesn't know what to do. This is the approach we're not gonna take when investing. So there you have it. That is the bone in ham, bonehead play by Jay. And the reason I show you that is because those are all the things we are not going to do when we select our investment decisions. We're not going to be backed into a corner, have to guess the shape of Steve Harvey's head, panic, be spontaneous, and react emotionally. Those are things we're not going to do as we approach investing. We're going to be rational, well thought out, and have logic and strategy for every decision we make and why. So first thing we're going to get into is why we invest. So if you've enjoyed previous videos, this video, or you're looking forward to future videos, we have some cool interviews coming, career conversations with professionals of all background, I will ask you to please join the community and subscribe. There's nothing that goes along with it other than being part of the Restart community. That being said, we're slowly moving on up. We've had some conversations this week with production companies, but for right now, we're pretty low budget. This was the dry erase board in my office. I erased it. There's nothing on it. I'm not going to write on it. I thought it looked professional. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. This was a little uh, tree from Kohl's that was at actually, whoop, fumble. See, that's how low budget we are. We, I don't even have a good, uh, I don't even have a good tripod here. But this was from the spare bedroom. And then I got my, my Simba mug. Big Lion King guy. But that being said, please subscribe. If you like this, throw us a thumbs up, comment. Let's get in to why we invest. So the golden question, why do we invest? Well, we invest to grow our money and then build wealth on our existing money. Okay, so that's why we do it. Another reason is this concept that you must know, it's called time value of money. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. We're gonna quiz you to see if you really understand what it is before I dive into it. If I got a big Ben Jaruski over here, big Ben, who the hell says Ben Jaruski? Tighten it up, buddy. All right, I got a big Benjamin, okay? And I could give this to you today, or I could give this to you in a month from now. Do you want it today, or do you want it in a month from now? Think about it. Well, here's the answer. You want it today. Well, why? Why is that? That is because with time value of money, they say that the identical sum is more value at the present time than the same exact sum in the future time. So here's an example. I was born in 1988. $100 in 1988 is worth now in 2020 around $220 because of inflation. So if I just sat on that $100 and put it in an envelope and then today in 2020 open it, still hundred bucks. But if I invest it and I put it in the right places with inflation at the bare minimum, if I could just grow at the rate of inflation, it'd be worth 220. The goal of investing is to outperform inflation and make even more than that. So that's why we invest. Let's get into when we invest. All right, so we talked about why you invest. Now we're going to get into when you should invest. The whole overarching theme here is going to be that the earlier you invest, the better you will be off. So let's give you an example to prove that. Now, actually, before I get in this example, I want to also let you know that 
Each circumstance is different. There's going to be situations when you should be paying down debt rather than investing, but we will do a full tutorial on that. For the purpose of this conversation, we are going to prove that the earlier you invest, the better your investment will be off down the road. So Jason at 21, $5,000, I'm going to invest it until I'm 65, not touch a penny. And let's say on average, I earn 10% every year. What's going to happen is there is going to be annual interest compounding, compounding interest. And what that means is that as I invest, I'm gonna earn interest on the principal amount, the 5,000, and I'm gonna to continue to invest that, and then I'm gonna earn money on the 5,000 plus the interest and continue to reinvest that, and it is a secret to wealth. Reinvesting your dividends, compounding interest, and continuing to let your money build on top of it. But anyway, it's 5,000 bucks, 21 years old, don't touch it till I'm 65, 10%. That return for me will be about $331,000 when I'm 65. Let's give a different example. The only thing we're changing is my age. All parameters stay the same. We're gonna go from 21 to 35. Let's say I decide to make that $5,000 investment at 35. Well, with all the same parameters, at 65, that amount is gonna be about $87,000. So you can see the big difference of 14 years in investing, given this example, 5,000 turns to 331, and 1,000 and another 5,000 turns into 87,000. Now, if you're 35 and you're pulling your hair out, oh my God, what did I do, I'm too late. It's never too late. We can start now and we can make sure that you're in a good position come retirement. Okay, Jason, I get it. I know why we invest. I know when we invest and the earlier that we do it, the better we'll be off. So where do I put my money? Well, let's talk about a few areas that you could put your money and I'll dive into each of them. We'll talk about the stock market. We'll talk about mutual funds, investment bonds, savings accounts, physical commodities, and actually real estate as well. After addressing those in other tutorials, I'll get very specific with different things we can do in each of those investments. But one thing to note, regardless of what you're investing in, shortcuts are almost impossible when it comes to investing. I don't know why. The first, whenever I think of shortcuts, the first thing I think about is Jim Carrey, liar, liar, one day of not lying, trying to take shortcuts, and his whole life falls apart. So no shortcuts in investing. We got to do our due diligence. Let's start breaking down these investment options. So what is the stock market? The stock market is a big pool. It's, a, it's an aggregation of buyers and sellers that are trading business ownership claims, okay? So then you say, well, how do I actually, I wanna go buy a stock like Target or Apple, how do I do it? Well, you do it through a brokerage firm. And a brokerage firm is a financial institution that help with the whole buying and selling of financial securities. Okay, what's a financial security? It's a fancy word for financial asset that you can trade. Okay, so then you say, well, what are the brokerage, what do I do? Some of these names will probably ring a bell. These are all brokerage that you you can actually do it yourself or seek their professional help, but really well-known ones are like Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Edward Jones, TD Ameritrade. Then there are some really cool new ones out there like New Age Brokerage, uh, apps like Betterment. So that's the platform in which you can actually buy and sell business ownership claims on the stock market. So with the stock market, we often hear people talk about the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. Okay, so those are like vitals for how the whole stock market is performing. Kind of like when we go to the doctor or a hospital, what's the first thing they do? They want to know your blood pressure, your pulse, your weight, they, things like that. Because those will give an indicator of how your whole body's performing. Well, that's why the news is always talking about what the Dow Jones and what the S&P 500 are doing. Because those are indicators for how the whole entire market is performing. So what are they? Well, I'm gonna keep it real simple, but the Dow Jones, imagine a big basket here, and we take 30 of the most recognizable, largest companies in the United States. And it gives us a good idea how the United States economy is performing, because we take these 30 companies, you know, companies like Nike and American Express and Apple and McDonald's, and we put them in this basket, and then we measure this basket, and it gives us an idea of how all 30 of these companies are performing as a whole. So we can look at the Dow and say, okay, I see where the market's going because that's how these 30 companies collectively are performing. 
Now the S&P 500, some say it's even a better representation of the overall market because it is 500 large cap companies. What's a large cap company? It's a company that has a market capitalization over $5 billion. For some of my finance gurus out there, they will know that market capitalization is gonna equal the total shares outstanding of a company times the actual price. But in the S&P 500, think about a bigger basket. And so when we look at the S&P 500, it gives us an idea of how all these monster big 500 companies are performing in one snapshot. And then you might ask yourself, well, how do they determine? Well, there's a committee that'll select based on certain criteria, what company should go in this pool so that can really give us as an investor an idea of how the market's performing. And last thing I will say is you can actually buy through a brokerage firm, the S&P 500 is an index and the Dow Jones is an index. So instead of investing in just McDonald's, you can invest in one of these indexes. And what a lot of professors, I got my MBA at a, at a top finance school, and what most professors will tell you is that you'll never be able to outperform the market. Meaning, if you were to just buy the S&P 500 for the rest of your life, it will be very difficult for you to pick out single stocks and outperform the S&P 500. So I always say five minutes of finance is five minutes too long, but this is a very important introductory topic that we're discussing, which will allow me to get very specific in other tutorials. So I'll make it quick, but let's keep going. Let's talk about mutual funds. Mutual funds, imagine like a shopping cart and similar to an index, you're going to pick out certain stocks and it's gonna be in one shopping cart. The difference is it's very professionally managed. So there are tons and tons of mutual funds. But the thing about mutual funds that's advantageous is you have a professional money manager who's brilliant every day, reallocating, putting all these stocks in one fund and you could buy this fund. And with that, you're gonna get economies of scale, you're gonna get diversification, you're gonna get different asset classes, and you're gonna get a brilliant mind behind the man uh, mutual fund that's gonna actively manage it. So it's gonna likely, it could be a safer investment if you're a novice investor. But one of the things you have to consider with a mutual fund is you gotta check the fees, because usually there's a lot of fees because you have someone that's professionally doing it. But a mutual fund is another option, an alternative for investment. So if you didn't want any risk at all, you'd keep all your money in cash, and I wouldn't recommend that. But if you want just a little step up from that, we call that, and as you know, a savings account. A savings account's gonna be fully liquid, you can get it at any time, accessible, and it's gonna be insured. So you're not gonna lose that money. Now, the one thing is you're not gonna get paid much money. So you have to determine what makes sense for you. My personal opinion is I use a savings account for my emergency cash. When I have a certain dollar amount that I need no matter what that I know I can't lose, I call that my emergency cash fund. And it still earns a little interest. It's still a little investing, but that's where I put it. So another alternative to investing in some of the things we talked about already is real estate. Now I'm gonna do a ton of tutorials on real estate because there are so many areas to cover from residential real estate to flipping to making sure that there are renters in to stay cash flow positive there's commercial real estate there's taking equity out of existing real estate to purchase more it can get very intense but it can make you a lot of money now one barrier to all this is you usually need a lot of capital to get going but there are alternatives to look at something called a publicly traded REIT a real estate investment trust and what these are, are companies that usually own and operate income producing real estate. And you could buy in based on the price of the share of that REIT. So it still gives you some real estate exposure, um, but you're not technically going out buying a $4.4 million commercial property. So a lot of these REITs have focuses and you'll have to look at them. They're very niche and you do research on them, but some REITs will only manage residential properties. Some of them will only uh, manage and own hospital properties or shopping centers or retail. Some will only do gaming and casinos. So there is a long extravagant list when it comes to real estate, but you should know it is an option for investing and a good one at that. So the last area of investing we're gonna to cover today is investing in physical commodities. So that's like investing in gold, silver, aluminum, crude oil, things of that nature. 
And it's a way to hedge against the market and what's happening. Now, there are different theories on it, but in general, most will say something like gold will work inversely to the market. So when the market's doing well, in general, it's argued, but gold value will go down. In times of economic hardship, when things aren't going well in the market, gold will go up. So it gives you an idea of why people will also invest in physical commodities. So today we covered a lot. We talk about why you invest, where you invest, how you invest. We broke down different options for investing, and this is just the basics. We are going to get into so much more detail about investing strategy, retirement planning, really the list goes on of what you can do out there from a strategy perspective. And I think it starts with learning from the best. So we're going to learn from guys like Warren Buffett and what they did. Those tutorials are to come, but thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Restart. If you could please comment, like, and subscribe, we greatly appreciate it. And thanks again for your time.